Quarterback moves we'd like to see. Chris, you get the first pick. Oh, thank you very much. This is nice. Okay. I mean, again, this isn't the most realistic thing in the world, but, man, when we're going to have a draft like this, I'm going to have some fun. I mean, what? I want to see Aaron Rodgers on the 49ers. That's what I want to see. I mean, is that a realistic enough one to go with here? I mean, there's enough rumors there, right? I mean, I think so. But how could Chris Sims lose with that situation right there? My favorite quarterback with my favorite coach on a really good team. Rodgers goes back to the Bay Area, you know, and gets to be a part of that and that offense. Oh, my gosh, would I love it. I'd be wearing an Aaron Rodgers 49ers jersey every Thursday on the show if that was the case. Uh, that You know, you you already are hard to deal with. Good Lord, <laughs> it would be 100 times worse if Aaron Rodgers were playing for the San Francisco 49ers. But, uh, hey, maybe next year. Maybe that's maybe, maybe they do a Band-Aid with someone for a year and they get in position for Rodgers next year. It's pretty clear that the Packers yeah. and Rodgers are connected for one year, but not for two. Next year it could be very different. I'm going to go with the guy that we spent a lot of time talking about earlier in the hour, Russell Wilson, to America's team, Ooh. Dallas Cowboys. Right now, I have no idea what it would take for the Cowboys to get him. I don't know where Dak Prescott would end up. Surely he wouldn't also be on the Cowboys. But what a solution that would be to this never-ending problem. And, and look at it. Russell Wilson's contract averages $35 million per year. They got to pay Dak Prescott $37 million this year just to keep him with no commitment beyond this year, a 44% raise to tag him again in 2022. And, and, as, and look, this Russell Wilson thing is not new. It's, it's finally hitting in a big way, but it's been lingering for a while. And the one team that I keep hearing about when Russell Wilson's name comes up and the possibility of leaving Seattle is the Cowboys, Chris. Well, yeah, I, I hear you there. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, Russell Russell Wilson to the Giants a few years ago. I think that was a real thing when we kind of heard that and, you know, all those rumors. I, so, again, I don't think it's crazy. I hear you there. And I might pick Russell to another team here a little later on in the draft. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Deshaun Watson. <sighs> I don't know what team to pick here. I'm I'm stuck in between. But for the for the for the sake of fun, right, I'll go with the Patriots. I'd love to see Deshaun do that. That would be a lot of fun. He has knowledge of that offense, except this would be even more diverse and he would have to learn more of it. But man, a guy like him, a year after Brady went to the Bucks and won the Super Bowl, now the Patriots make this type of move to get this type of quarterback. And, of course, we know they need some weapons around them to help them, but they got a lot of money to spend. It's hard. That that, that one jumps out to me. Uh, it does, and, and I think it would be fun. Watson becomes a potential magnet for free agents. He does. We know that the Patriots have plenty of cap space. Right. And, and, and you know, you could have that Tom Brady dynamic in New England where other guys want to go join Deshaun Watson, and they're not going to sweat the idea that, you know, it's no fun playing for Bill Belichick. We want to be with Deshaun. We want to build something special. We want to chase championships. Okay, so assuming that the Texans are smart enough to move on from Deshaun Watson, they'll need a quarterback. I'd love to see Derek Carr to the Houston Texans for a variety of reasons, one of which is David Carr was the first quarterback in franchise history. And the Texans are kind of dysfunctional right now, so I'd kind of like to see how Carr would exist in that environment. And the whole separation from the Raiders would be newsworthy. Now, the Raiders have gotten calls about Derek Carr, and the Raiders have resisted. But, you know, I, there, there, there may be something there, and wouldn't it be great if the Texans decide they're going to backfill their quarterback position by getting Derek Carr. Oh, uh, it really, it really would be. I mean, it would be cool. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I think, um, you know, he's got – he's a Texan, first off. The fans would, you know, latch on to that and be around that, certainly. There's no doubt. And we know, hey, the Raiders, Gruden, he's always he's always flirting. He's always looking for somebody else. I will say, because, I mean, I know, I know – what was it? What did I read yesterday? But David Carr, right, said that, you know, they've got the, – the Raiders have gotten calls on Derek there and everything I, like I that. I said that. Yeah. I just said that. You weren't listening. Sorry. To me. You were too busy trying to figure out your next You're pick. right. I'm sorry. But I had a point I was going to make anyways, either ways. Just go. I, I just can't imagine the Raiders letting him go at this point. I mean, maybe if something came about, but 
man, Gruden's finally got his robot wired to run his offense. I would think he'd be a little reluctant to trade him. Not that I don't think your thing's a great idea. And sorry, I repeated that. You were I, right. Let, let me say this. Yeah. Let me say this, though. I've heard from a source that I trust that the Raiders are not going to trade him but I've yet to report it at PFT because I still think even under those circumstances, you can't rule out John Gruden catching a wild hair. I, I totally agree with you there. I, I mean, you're right. You can't right. rule. You can't rule that out. I think my last one, I'm going to go Russell Wilson to the Colts. Okay. I didn't get the, I'm going to, I'm going to use him one. Yeah, I know, but they're ready. You know, again, Tampa wasn't looked at as this place of like, Oh, I want to go live there. It's this shining beacon, but now it looks pretty damn cool. Doesn't it? Yeah. You know, boat parades. So, okay, I know Sierra and Russell Wilson. It might not be like Indianapolis type of people, but damn, that offense, some of the weapons they got there, that O-line, Frank Reich's creativity, I think that could put them right in the Super Bowl conversation. I'm torn between Kirk Cousins to the 49ers hey, I got and Jimmy Garoppolo Cousins. to the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Kirk Cousins to the 49ers is far more realistic than Aaron Rodgers, and the Vikings are in a tough spot here. And Cousins last week, with a smile on his face, he made it clear to us during PFTPM he's not signing an extension with the Vikings. He's going he's gonna to let – I'm going to go Cousins to the 49ers, Pete. He's going to let – this play out, and he's going to have tremendous leverage. In two years, he's going to be back on the open market. And if the Vikings don't trade him, a $35 million fully guaranteed salary for 2022 vests on March 19. I, now, the problem is, who do the Vikings put yeah, in? Yeah, what are you going to do? Place? I think you'd have to bring home Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. I think that's your only alternative. What? No, I, I, that was Pete that you went, like oh, that. I, that wasn't me. That should have, oh. Yeah. I, maybe I should have said Teddy Bridgewater to the Vikings. That's the other half of it. Kirk Cousins to the 49ers. Teddy Bridgewater to the Vikings. That's how that would play out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.